Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Fei Peng, and I'm from Purdue University. Uh, today, I'm going to present our work, X-Force, for executing binary programs for security applications. This work is done in collaboration with Zhui Deng, Professor Xiang Yuzhang, Professor Dong Yan Xu from Purdue University, and Zhi Qiangling from UT Dallas, and uh, Zhen Dongsu from UC Davis. First, I will introduce the background and motivation of our work. X-Force is working on binary analysis, which is much more challenging than the traditional software analysis due to the lack of source code and symbolic information. Without these kinds of information, it is difficult to get the high-level semantics like control flow graph, variable type. However, binary analysis has many security applications, like exposing malware behavior by constructing control flow graph and call graph. Also, it can be used to identify and patch security vulnerabilities. There are three existing approaches for binary analysis that are static analysis, dynamic analysis, and symbolic analysis. However, they all have their own limitations. So now we compare these three in terms of having good coverage, handling packing and obfuscation, the precision of the result, and the scalability. Static analysis usually has good coverage and is very scalable. However, it is difficult to handle packed and obfuscated uh, program uh, because some of the instructions are dynamically computed. For dynamic analysis, uh, coverage sometimes heavily relies on the good input, which may not be available. Symbolic analysis has been seen much progress in recent years. However, if the input file is not available and has non-trivial size and format, modeling the file as symbolic is not scalable. In addition, using constraint solver is also expensive. Now we talk about the design of X-Force. So what is X-Force? It is a dynamic analysis engine that can force a binary to execute. And during the process, we do not need to provide any input or any environment setup. Also, X-Force can explore different paths by simply switching the outcome of predicate without using a, a constraint solver. Now we take a look at a motivation example. This example shows the hidden malicious payload that hijacked the name resolution for a specific domain. We'll use this example to illustrate the challenges faced by all the existing approaches. And uh, later on, we see how X-Force can address these problems. So first, the, uh, the program uh, reads the integer x at line three. If the condition satisfied at line four, uh, memory will be allocated and is a, uh, assigned to pointer P. Later on, if the code red bit is set in X, um, the, a domain name uh, will be populated into the object P, and later on, the object will be pushed into the hash table at line eight using KX. Uh, there are other objects also put into the hash table at line 11. At line 13, an object will be fetched using KY, whose value is always equal to x through execution. Uh, from line 14 to 16, if the fetching is successful, the redirection malicious payload will get triggered. Uh, the problem in this example for static analysis is that the object fetched at line 13, s, will be analyzed to be either from line 8 or line 11. However, the truth is that it should be only from line 8. Uh, because y is equal to x all the time through execution, but it's difficult for static analysis to get this truth. For dynamic analysis, it is difficult for us to provide specific input x whose code red bit is set. If the code uh, red bit is not set in x, an object with key x is not pushed into the hash table. So later on at line 13, a fetching object at line uh, will fail. So the malicious payload at line 16 will not be triggered. For symbolic analysis, uh, we can model x as a symbolic variable, and the hidden malicious payload might be reached at line 16. However, notice that at line 20, the function input dictionary reads a large file, which is not available and has non-trivial size and format. So modeling the file as symbolic is definitely not scalable. Now we take a look at X-Force and see how X-Force can address these problems. So basically, X-Force provides random inputs for the program to execute. 
So first, uh, read an integer, x would be a random value. We can see there are three predicates in this um, program at line 4, 6, and 14. Since it's a random input, we assume all the three predicates go to the false branch. So this leads to a non-interesting path. We can see that there's no object pushing to the hash table at line 8, and the malicious payload is not triggered. Secondly, Xforce try to flip predicates one by one. So it first flip the predicate at line 4, and uh, line 5 will get triggered. However, this still leads to a non-interesting path. Uh, since line 8 is still not covered, and the redirection malicious payload is not triggered either. Next, Xforce try to flip the second predicate at line 6. This time, we will call the function genName and hash table put. Notice that based on the execution trees, line 5 is not covered, so P, which is a global pointer, is still a non pointer. So when we continue executing the program at line 21, a memory write exception occurs uh, due to uh, e dereferencing an invalid pointer, which is Q arrow name. Now, we introduce uh, one of the most important component in Xforce, which is crash-free execution. So from the example, um, what should we do about the previous exception? In the early stage of our project, we simply skip the instructions that contain invalid memory access. However, we find that there are a lot of falling exceptions, and uh, we need to skip them all. Even worse, since most of the exceptions happen on heap, so we lose a large amount of heap data. Finally, we decide to allocate a piece of memory on demand and uh, fix the corrupted pointer. However, it is not sufficient by just fixing the corrupted pointer itself, because there are other correlated pointers, and we need to fix them all. Still. We use the previous example to show how does it work. Uh, based on the execution trees, since line five is not covered, so p is a non-pointer, and uh, when we continue executing and call the function gen name, p will be uh, copied to q as an argument, and then later on be used uh, by the variable q arrow name, which is the root cause of this exception. If we simply allocate a piece of memory, and recover the value inside of Q arrow name. P and Q are still non-pointers. So later on, when we execute the hash table put, we put a non-pointer into the hash table, which is useless. So based on our observations, first, some pointers are correlated. For example, P, Q, and Q arrow name. Secondly, correlated pointers are only linearly correlated. For example, it is meaningless to do multiplication and division on a pointer value. So based on these two points, we devise a solution called linear set tracing. Basically, uh, we, memory, uh, we, we maintain uh, sets for all the memories and registers. And uh, uh, if memories and registers are linearly correlated, which means one is copied, added, or subjected from another one, we put them into the same set. And later on, when memory exception occurs, we recover values for all the elements based on the maintained linear set. In the previous example, when the, execution, when the exception occurs at line 21, the variable p, q, and q arrow name are in the same set. So after allocating a piece of memory and fix the corrupted pointer q arrow name, we also recover the value inside of p and q. So later on, when we push p into the hash table, we really put, uh, we put a meaningful pointer into it. So uh, our object will successfully uh, fetch at line 13, and the malicious payload redirection will get triggered. Besides the crash-free execution model, the second important component in Xforce is exploration algorithms. We develop a couple of algorithms with different time complexity. For example, one is called branch coverage driven algorithm whose complexity is big O n, uh, where n denotes the number of basic blocks. The idea behind this algorithm is that we only flip the branches that leads to new coverage. The second algorithm is called exponential search algorithm. Uh, basically, we twice all different combinations of predicate outcomes, so the search space is exponential. To further decrease 
the search space, we also implement a taint analysis subsystem that can determine if a, a branch is input related. Now, we talk about the essence of X-Force. The blue oval above is the reachable program states through possible inputs. So this is the ideal coverage of all possible program states. Static analysis is too conservative, so it yields a over-approximated coverage. Dynamic analysis, on the other hand, only analyzes a subset of real executions, so it yields under-approximated coverage. X-Force, however, is neither sound nor complete. Uh, it is unsound because we might execute in feasible paths. It is incomplete because the search space is too large to explore. However, we argue that X-Force treats both soundness and completeness for practicality. We argue X-Force is still important in practice in the following four reasons. First one, re the results are not affected much by the infeasible paths because uh, we only flip a small number of predicates in our linear uh, search algorithm. Second, X-Force is fairly fast. For example, we do not use the expensive constraint solver. Third, X-Force can naturally handle packed, obfuscated, and even self-modifying binaries by simply executing the program. And at last, since X-Force is a dynamic analysis engine, other di existing dynamic analysis can be easily built on top of X-Force, since X-Force has the concrete states that can be used by others. Uh, to make X-Force practical to handle real-world programs, we solve a lot of implementation challenges. That includes handling jump tables, handling loops, handling recursions, handling uh, different kinds of library calls using different strategies. Also, we need to protect critical data on stack memory, for example, the return address, base pointers. For handling multiple thread execution, we currently serialize the execution by calling the main function of the thread. We find that exploring different thread scheduling is very challenging and uh, will be part of our future work. For more details about the implementation challenge, please refer to our paper. The next part is the evaluation. Uh, we evaluate X-Force on three different kinds of studies. The first one is the control flow, graph, and call graph construction. In this case study, we, we evaluate 12 programs in SPEC 2000 int. The first table shows here is the number of instructions covered uh, by different approaches. For example, the second column shows the coverage for IDA Pro. The third column is for dynamic runs. Basically, we run all the programs by providing all the inputs from SPEC and uh, union the results at last. The fourth column is for X-Force. The second last one is the instructions covered by dynamic runs, but not by X-Force. And the last column is the uh, coverage for X-Force, but not by, by dynamic runs. So from the uh, last two columns, we can tell that X-Force is a subset, uh, is a superset of dynamic runs. Except for the uh, program called ProBMK. ProBMK is a kind of a difficult case for X-Force. It's a, a Perl interpreter that contains a deterministic finite automaton, which is very path sensitive. The second table shows here is the indirect call edge coverage. Indirect call edge identification is uh, very challenging, even we have source code. So it is hard to get the ground truth. And uh, for each indirect call invocation, that might contain multiple potential targets that are dynamically computed. So it is hard for static analysis to resolve the targets. For example, the second column shows the result for IDA. We can see that the number is extremely small. And the third column is the coverage for dynamic runs. The fourth column is the result for LLVM. We verify that the result for LLVM is too conservative and uh, X-Force is a reasonable subset of LLVM. Again, from the last two columns, we can tell that X-Force is a reasonable superset of dynamic runs. 
This table shows the basic performance of X force. We can see um, the second column shows the running time in seconds. Even for large programs, X force just take few hours. And the third column is the number of paths it explores. And the last, last column is the average number of switched predicates out of total number of switch, uh, total number of predicates. We can see that this number is extremely small that indicates that violation of the violation of the feasibility is fairly small. The second case study is the malware analysis. Malware analysis mainly focuses on exposing malware behavior by looking at the library calls it makes. In this case study, we evaluate 10 malware samples that are either wild captured virus or APT samples. The four, the four samples highlighted by the uh, blue rectangle are packed malwares. From the number of library calls discovered by both IDA Pro and X-Force, we can tell that X-Force get much more than IDA Pro. And for the other unpacked samples, X-Force gets the similar data similar number with IDA Pro. Also, X-Force beats dynamic native run for all the programs. And the last case study is type reverse engineering. In this case study, we improve the existing dynamic analysis tool called Rewards. And we implement Rewards on top of X-Force. Since X-Force provides concrete execution states that can be used by Rewards, Little modification is required. Based on the evaluation result in the paper, uh, we increase variable coverage from 57% to 84%. Also, X-Force increases type reverse accuracy from 88% to 90%. This shows all the related works of X-Force due to the time limitation. Uh, we're going to skip this section. Last, we conclude the presentation. In our work, we propose a dynamic analysis engine, X-Force, which is a system that can force binary to be executed. And there are two important components inside of X-Force that are a crash-free execution model and a customizable path exploration algorithms. Finally, we evaluate X-Force on three types of case studies that shows X-Force is very effective. Um, the three case studies are control flow graph and call graph construction, malware analysis, and the type of reverse engineering. Oh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, yeah, I'm happy for questions. Do you have any questions? Please state your name. Hi, I'm Peter Chapman, Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, so thank you for the talk. Uh, some of the ideas here seem similar to what uh, concolic execution engines use, like Qt. Have you th thought about comparing your work to Qt or a similar system? Uh, it seems like the trade-off here is that uh, you're willing to execute non-valid paths in, in order to save time. Is that trade-off worth it? Or you you mean idea? the concolic execution? Excuse me? You mean the concolic execution? Yeah. Uh, in, in our paper, we compare X-Force with S2E, which is a concolic execution. Symbolic is that the dynamic? Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you can see the data in the paper. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ben Lifshitz, MSR. I really enjoyed your talk. I think this is a really um, interesting work. Um, I was wondering, um, as far as the performance is concerned, if you have further comments on the ability to parallelize your runs to make it faster, because I think while for offline use, this is probably OK, for online uh, exploration, it's way too slow. Yeah, uh, based, on, uh, based on our experience, uh, the, uh, the analysis result is just one time cost. For example, to get a control flow graph, it's just one time cost. So few days, even a few days is okay, I think. Not if you have millions of binaries to go through. Oh, then, yeah, probably we need parallel computation for that. Maybe we can take this offline. Shuo Chen, also from Microsoft Research. So I, I wonder if you are aware of a recent work uh, from MSR, which is called Micro Execution. Uh, I believe it is in ICSI uh, this year. 
uh, if you go back to your con conclusion slides, uh, I, I believe the, uh, what, what they do is something similar to your first bullet, which is to, uh, to, to force the, the execution to go into a new path without, uh, without providing input and uh, any environment set up. So I just want to bring this point. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the new idea inside of X-Force is uh, the most important one is the crash-free execution model, which, okay. yeah, based on our experience uh, during the experiment, we see that even for programs, for example, like Vertex in spec, in, we can even, without input, we can okay. even reconstruct the data structure inside the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank okay, you. thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's thank the speaker again.